On a quiet May night in an unsuspecting community in southern Kansas, a father and daughter are in town eating dinner quietly as they begin to wind down for the night. As they are eating their meal and discussing everyday events, a siren begins to go off. It is around 9.20 p.m., making the upcoming threat that much more unnerving as it is after dark and no one can see what exactly is coming. As the daughter goes down to the basement, the father waits for a neighbor he is expecting to take shelter with him, but never shows up. He waits throughout the heavy rainfall and large hail for her and her infant son, but in vain. Then there is a pause in the rain and hail, and for a second, it might have seemed like the threat had passed, but in reality, was an area known as the Notch. The Notch is a calm area between the precipitation of the supercell and the greatest threat the people of Greensburg ever faced, as the first EF5 tornado in history was about to bear down and change the town forever. It looks like now a tornado emergency has been issued for Greensburg now. They are tracking that large, extremely dangerous tornado located about five miles just to the south of Greensburg. Dave, you were tracking that and showing us just now on there. That is moving north at about 20 miles per hour. So you really need to get in the center of your house or your storm shelters immediately. Again, this is an emergency situation for Greensburg issued by the National Weather Service. A tornado emergency for Greensburg at 9.37 p.m. Central Daylight Time. National Weather Service meteorologists and storm spotters were tracking a large and extremely dangerous tornado. This tornado was located five miles south of Greensburg, moving north at 20 miles per hour. Now we have an updated picture from our KSN high resolution next rad Doppler radar. Boy, I sure hate to tell you this, friends, but it looks like that thing is right on top of Greensburg. So your time is up. You need to be in your shelter right now. It is 947, and the arrival time at the very latest will be 950. So you should be in your uh, shelter right now. The Greensburg tornado is one of the most infamous tornadoes in American history and the most infamous nighttime tornado in recent years. This is due to the sheer strength and size of the tornado, as well as it completely leveling a town and leaving little behind. The tornado was also the first EF5 tornado with the new enhanced Fujita scale put into commission in February 2007. And already, as it's just three months in, that scale was put to the test. In this documentary, we will be going over everything from the conditions that caused such a calamitous event to the tornado itself and how Greensburg suffered apocalyptic damage. The day of May 4th, 2007 was a very warm and humid day across the Great Plains with temperatures in the mid to upper 80s in dew points well over 70 degrees. This is a combination we are all too familiar with on days of extreme severe weather, but several other conditions makes this stand out more than others. The first condition was the presence of a low pressure system that had stalled out over the Great Plains region starting in the overnight hours of May 4th. This coupled with the associate warm front allowed even more gulf moisture to flow through the plains and for it to become a ticking time bomb as this was allowing for a stronger amount of convective available potential energy or CAPE for short. This condition is common across every severe weather event, as severe thunderstorms require at least a little bit of CAPE to develop. What is not as common, however, is a CAPE value over 5,500 joules per kilogram, which was recorded across the region that afternoon. However, this was held back by a relatively strong CAP, which is a stable air mass that prevents severe thunderstorms from firing. However, with this much instability above the capping layer, it was only a matter of time before it explosively breaks. The final condition that makes this different in a literal worst case scenario is that the convection did not reach its peak until after it got dark, primarily because of the cap breaking so late in the day and persistent amounts of wind shear across the region, the strongest of which was over northern Oklahoma and southern Kansas. All the ingredients would come together and be the catalyst for one of the most memorable nights 
in 21st century weather. Shortly after 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time, a supercell began to form in the northeastern corner of the Texas Panhandle and began to develop in the early evening across the Texas and Oklahoma Panhandles while producing a few isolated tornadoes. This initial development was slow as it moved through Oklahoma and approached southern Kansas, but by 8.30 p.m. it developed a strong wall cloud and the first tornado warning with the cell was issued five minutes later in Clark County, Kansas. Sirens began to go off across the area, but because it was now after sunset, it would be very difficult to see tornado development, which would prove fatal, as now there was little to no warning of a developing funnel. The supercell would produce several tornadoes as it ravaged through southern Kansas, with a first funnel forming quickly. The exact time the first tornado touched down is somewhat unclear due to the darkness, but based on radar, it is estimated that a brief tornado touched down around 9 p.m. in southern Kiowa County in Kansas. This initial tornado was short-lived and somewhat weak, with it only being on the ground for a few minutes before lifting back into the wall cloud. This piece was short-lived, as several storm chasers captured the formation of a much larger tornado south of Greensburg at 9.20 p.m. Due to it being nighttime, the tornado could not be seen very well, and only through lightning strikes around it, it could be illuminated for a split second. However, the tornado was rapidly intensifying as it approached Greensburg, leading to this NWS broadcast. The National Weather Service in Dodge City has issued a tornado warning for Kiowa County in south-central Kansas until 10 p.m. Central Daylight Time. At 9.17 p.m. Central Daylight Time, National Weather Service meteorologists were tracking a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado 14 miles south of Greensburg, or 11 miles northwest of Wilmore moving northeast at 25 miles an hour. Locations impacted include Greensburg and rural residences of eastern Kiowa County. This includes Highway 54 between mile markers 105 and 115. This storm has a history of producing tornadoes causing damage. The safest place to be during a tornado is in a basement. If in a mobile home evacuate to a substantial structure. Get under a workbench or other piece of sturdy furniture. If no basement is available, seek shelter on the lowest floor of the building in an interior hallway or room such as a closet. Use blankets or pillows to cover your body and always stay away from windows. This is an extremely dangerous and life-threatening situation. A large tornado has been confirmed. If you are in the path of this destructive tornado, take cover immediately in a basement or other underground shelter. The tornado had grown to a half a mile wide tornado by 9.38 p.m and was approaching Greensburg from the south as it was continuing to intensify as it affected rural areas in Kiowa County. Just three minutes later, it would more than triple its size to 1.7 miles wide, wider than the entire town of Greensburg, as a tornado emergency was issued as it became apparent that catastrophic damage was about to occur. A tornado warning remains in effect until 10 p.m. Central Daylight Time for Central Kiowa County. A tornado emergency for Greensburg at 9.37 p.m. Central Daylight Time. National Weather Service meteorologists and storm spotters were tracking a large and extremely dangerous tornado. This tornado was located 5 miles south of Greensburg, moving north at 20 miles per hour. A violent tornado was on a direct path for portions of Greensburg, especially the eastern portions of town. Take immediate tornado precautions. This is an emergency situation for Greensburg. A tornado watch remains in effect until 2 a.m. Saturday morning for southwestern Kansas. The tornado then would enter Greensburg shortly before 10 p.m. at peak intensity, sweeping away homes and other well-built buildings in its path. Because of this, the damage in this area for the first time was rated at EF5 intensity. 
The tornado then weakened slightly as it entered residential areas across southern Greensburg, but it remained very large and very violent as it crashed into Del Mar Day Elementary School, completely leveling parts of the building and flattening many homes nearby at EF4 strength. Downtown Greensburg was next, and the area would be completely unrecognizable. It was an apocalyptic result for the downtown area, as many buildings were annihilated along with two schools, a tractor supply company store, and city hall were all flattened. A motel on the west side of town was badly damaged by the winds, and trees throughout the town were completely defoliated and stripped clean of all their bark. Vehicles were also thrown across town, some going hundreds of yards away from their origin point and mangled beyond recognition. Due to severe ground scouring, several fire hydrants were ripped from the ground, and the city's water tower was completely toppled and smashed. Train cars were also overturned, and due to the risk of dangerous chemicals possibly in some of those cars, hazardous waste teams were called in to inspect the damage. Greensburg High School was also decimated by the tornado, sustaining high-end EF4 damage, with one wing of the school completely flattened, even though it was well-built and constructed with triple-thick masonry walls, going to show the raw strength of the tornado. The tornado then re-strengthened as it entered parts of northern Greensburg, with numerous homes completely obliterated, four of which were well-bolted to their foundations, warranting an EF5 intensity in that area. Neighborhoods in northern Greensburg were completely flattened, and many homes were swept cleanly away. The Kiowa County Memorial Hospital was severely damaged at EF3 intensity due to it being just outside of the strongest part of the tornado, and a 4.9-ton reinforced concrete beam was lifted and thrown into a nearby vehicle. The tornado then left Greensburg as it continued to throw and mangle cars, debark trees, and scour the ground as it maintained EF4 to EF5 intensity. After this, however, the tornado began to gradually weaken, moving a couple of miles north of Greensburg before executing a loop in several farm fields as it finally dissipated around 10.15 p.m. after tracking 22 miles and leaving behind a path of pure destruction and absolute hell in Greensburg. This was not the last of the tornadoes of the supercell, as a total of 22 tornadoes would touch down in its lifespan until after 2 in the morning, but Greensburg by far stands out the most due to its strength and its carnage. 95% of Greensburg was destroyed by the Wedge Tornado, with a total of 961 homes and businesses destroyed, 216 received major damage, and 307 others received some sort of damage as a result. Once the sun came up and the Kansas National Guard arrived to assess the damage, Greensburg was judged unsafe for those living there and was fully evacuated. Many of these people were relocated to either Wichita or Dodge City to treat for injuries and move into shelters as their homes were wiped out by the tornado. Over 100 Red Cross officials were called in, while FEMA would intervene to coordinate recovery efforts. Kansas Governor Kathleen Sebelius would declare a state of emergency for Kiowa County, and President George W. Bush would declare Greensburg a federal disaster area and permitted other federal agencies to assist in the recovery. The damage from the Greensburg tornado was approximately $153 million, and 11 people were killed, along with 63 others injured. Many people that were evacuated by the National Guard in the aftermath of the tornado never returned, with the population being cut in half by 2010. Of the around 1,500 people that lived in Greensburg before the tornado, only 777 were left according to the 2010 census, with that population decline continuing to this current day. Despite the pure hell Greensburg suffered due to this tornado, the town would ultimately recover in the most unexpected way possible. Of those that returned to the town, a new era had begun, as Greensburg would overhaul their entire electrical grid and become solely reliant on renewable energy sources such as solar and wind power. They would become America's first green town and would get assistance from FEMA to build a sustainable town for the long term. The town of Greensburg now consists of electric vehicle charging stations and homes powered by renewable sources, and a far cry to what it was before the tornado, as more people began to move out. Regardless, the town of Greensburg has somewhat of a happy ending, 
as they have propelled themselves as the greenest town in America and are arguably better off than before the tornado. I hope you enjoyed this documentary. The Greensburg tornado is the most infamous nighttime tornado in the modern era, and I felt that it deserved a documentary due to its insane amounts of strength and damage that it caused for many people in southern Kansas. It is also a tornado that is still very widely studied to this day, and it is an important cautionary tale to always be weather aware, even at night when tornadoes are still very possible. Be sure to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed it. Another documentary will be coming out soon, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Stay safe, everybody.